The ancient civilization of the world like in the prehistoric and Egyptian eras produces an art which is rigid, formal, symbolic rather than realistic. Artistic production in Greek era were influenced by the art of ancient Egyptians. Greek art can be classified in five forms. Architecture, sculpture, pottery, painting, and jewelry making. Ancient Greek architecture is best known from its temples. The Parthenon is a prime example of this. The second important type of building that survives is the open-air theater. Other architectural forms are the processional gateway, propylon, the public square, agora, surrounded by storied colonnade, stoa, the town council building, buletirian, the monumental tomb, mausoleum, and the stadium. Greek architecture is not only impressive, it is timeless. You don't have to dig ruins to find Greek architecture, it's all around you. Look at the National Museum of Natural History in Manila, Bank of the Philippine Islands, the Philippine Post Office, Department of Tourism, and the University of the Philippines. In short, if you want people to think something is important, put column on it, and not just any column, a Greek column. Greek columns comes in three orders. Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. All share a fluted column or drum, what they differ is at the top. This is called the capital of the column. The Doric column is the simplest of the Greek column, a tapered disc, supporting a square top. Look at the Philippine post office. See those little curlies at the top? That tells us that this is a column of the Ionic order. Let's take a look at the National Museum of Natural History. See the fancy filigree at the top of the column? That is a Corinthian order. Corinthian's column has many variety, but all share a leafy quality. The classical period was also the time when some of the most impressive bronze sculpture were made, they developed a keen eye for proportion. During the classical period, Greeks began sculpting more realistically. This paved the road for even more realistic sculpture to come in Roman art, and it is strikingly evident when you look at their beautiful recreation of a human form, expressive faces adorned these sculptures for the first time in the classical period. The Aphrodite was the most innovative and influential sculpture, and popularized the contrapposto pose. Contrapposto stand puts most of the figure's weight on one leg, turning the torso slightly, making subjects seem both dynamic and relaxed, unlike on the later sculpture, when human figure are in straight profile, making it unrealistic. As you walk through the ancient Greek museum, for the most part, what you see is pottery. Today Greek pottery is rare and so often ends up in museums. But in classical Greek times pottery was used for everyday life and tells us something about its use. Greek pottery was manufactured in a variety of different shapes and sizes according to the use to which a particular vessel would be put. Some popular shapes that are discovered are the Pelike, Lekanus, Lebes Gamikos, and Crater. Function is not known for certain, but many classical experts speculate, due to its shape, the locations they have been found, and the subject matter they are decorated with. Pelike is a one-piece ceramic vase, used as a wine container. 
Lecanus, a low bull with two horizontal handles and a low broad foot. Vessels of this shape frequently appear as wedding gifts and also serve as container for cooked food or bride's jewelry box. Leaves gamikos with high handles and lid used to carry bridal bath. Crater, used for diluting wine with water. It usually stood on a tripod in the dining room where wine was mixed. There are two technique in base painting. These are the red figure and the black figure technique. The red figure technique was first adopted in Athens in the 6th century BCE. The technique consisted of a background painted in black slip instead of the figures and relief lines were used for details. In black figure vase painting, figural and ornamental motifs were applied with a slip that turned black during firing, while the background was left the color of the clay. Paintings during the classical era were most commonly found in vases, tomb and also panels. Most of the subjects were battle scenes, mythological figures, and everyday scenes. Most common methods of Greek painting are fresco and encaustic method. In fresco method, water-based pigments on a freshly applied plaster, usually on a wall surfaces. Colors are made with grind powder pigments in pure water, dry and set with a plaster to become a permanent part of the wall. Ideal for murals, durable and has a matte style. Encaustic method of painting on the other hand. Use heating and melting beeswax. And then pigments was added and used for painting. Greek art set the foundations for many modern art practices, from our representation of human figure to the techniques used in pottery and paintings, more importantly its societal emphasis on the arts remains influential.